Welcome to MarshallsNow.com. I am Peter Bennett, the founder of MarshallsNow.com, and today's date is October 12, 2016. And today we have a special guest, and our guest is Sensei Mora Dumora. Welcome, Sensei. Well, thank you for inviting me. Great, great. I would like to thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. You have displayed your skills and energized a culture to study martial arts. And you are indeed a pioneer and promoter of goodwill. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. MartialArtsNow.com, and I'm sure our audience as well, uh, is excited in having the opportunity to hear about your experiences and endeavors. So if you don't mind, let's get started. Okay. Great. Uh, there are several websites detailing your martial arts experience. Many of your sites have done an excellent job uh, in doing so. I do not want to waste your time or our audience time in giving a complete detail of your experiences. However, please tell us, who are you in the martial arts? Well, I came to the United States in 1965, and uh, I introduction to this country, uh, Okinawa Weapons, and the story of karate. Hmm. Excellent. Okay. Could you tell us just a little bit more about your martial arts uh, experience before or prior to coming to the United States? Okay. Well, I studied uh, karate. At All right. I'm trying to get. Mm -hmm. I studied, uh, I was eight, and then before the war, and, uh, during the World War Two. So we don't have any, no requirement. So we just cut that in the tree. And used for uh, sword, hmm. and that uh, we just fighting. That's where we starting. Then one day, my hometown have a, a kendo group and dojo open. So I went over there. But they were teaching karate, and I tried to do karate, but I'm too young, so I cannot do that. But I watch every day. Then and the instructor said, "Come on in." That's why I starting. Then uh, nineteen. Uh, 57, uh, first time uh, JK Shodokan, they put uh, uh, JK in the All Japan Championships. And uh, I was watching them, I went over there watching them, and Mr. Kanazawa and Mr. Mikami were the last final. And that was so exciting. And I, I got to study this. So I studied uh, real hard, the day and the night. Then uh, 1961, uh, all started together, uh, all Japan championship, and uh, I'm a selection for one from my province to uh, compete. So I competed, and uh, I'm lucky I got the first place. That's why I changed my life. So I decided I want to do more karate. To study, so, so I started studying study in 1963. I went to Okinawa, then uh, I studied weapons and uh, uh, karate. Then in 1964, after Tokyo Olympics, I came to the United States. Uh, I have a friend, um, one of friend called Dan Dreger. He's a very famous in Japan, and uh, he introduced me Dan Ivan. Then he said. You want to come to the United States? I said, okay, I go. Then I came over to California. Hmm. And I have a hard time because uh, I cannot teach the same way that Japan teaching them. So nobody show up. So I study a different way, how to go through. Then uh, I started doing the demonstration in different places. And uh, then uh, a few years later, I got the Japanese village. And uh, I was watching the uh, Japanese dancing and tea ceremony. And uh, I was uh, watching, hey, this is a place I can do karate. So I start asking for manager, can you do karate demonstration? He said, uh, no, I'm not interesting. Then I said, I don't charge money, I just do it. So he, he said, okay, just do it. I did it, but no people reaction. So I got a uh, different idea for because uh, your 
before all the observation, you punch and stop in the face. Guy doesn't move. And then that's no good. So I made a reaction. I'm trying to hit it. He bent the body and he punched the face. He jumped right back. So that's why I started doing this. And uh, like a movie, you see the movie. Then uh, I got the trouble from Japan because I'm doing stupid things, I guess. <laughs> so, but after 50 years later, you look at today, every place in the world, even Japan, they do the same way I do demonstration. So I proved myself for this demonstration. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I don't know if you mentioned, but what were your instructor, major instructor name uh, when before coming to the United States? Who were your instructors? Uh, my sensei was a Ryushu Sakagami. <laughs> and the Kobudo, the Taira Shinken. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, you have uh, been featured in several movies and published a few books. If you would, expound, share with us some of the movies you've been involved in and uh, the title of some of the books you've published. Yeah. Well, movie business, I, I like to be some show business. Mm -hmm. I was a study of junior high school. But... Uh, my first movie in the United States is called The Island of Takamoro with the Bud Lancaster, Mike Oyo, Richard Beckhart, Barbara Corella. And then that, I went to audition with my friend. He's a professor in restaurant. So I went over there. About 50 uh, martial arts people were there and what were the left to the uh, people say. And I have no idea what did they say. Mm -hmm. I just said that because my friend said there. So and after that, they were turned out to go home. But my friend doesn't want to move, so I just stay with it. Then that guy come up and said, sign the paper. So I just signed the paper because he signed it. So I had to go with him. So then after that, that was a movie contract. And I had to fight with the tiger and the lion and the bear. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my gosh, <laughs> what I'm doing this? <laughs> but I signed already, so I came back up. So then I asked the guy, can you teach me how to do it? So I was about uh, two weeks. I was at a uh, uh, called Japanese village. They changed the ancient village. And uh, they have animals, tigers. So I had to feed them and touch them. But it's not friendly tiger. Mm. And anyway, we got six people pick them up. And then we're training, but I'm a small one. Everybody over six foot. I'm a five foot to five. Wow. So Tiger put, put, put the chin out. Person attack me first. I wow. hit it. But uh, anyway, it knocked me out a couple of times, but uh, I made it. So that's my <laughs> wow. first movie. And come back and I joined the union called Screen Actor Girl. And then after that, I tried to get another job that I can't get because uh, my language is not too good. So I quit. Then uh, one day, uh, uh, one production called me. He said, that Chuck Norris, uh, recommend you. I want to come. So I went over there. Then I read the uh, script. Was a Miyagi, 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 Miyagi. Every place I made Miyagi. It's too big. So I told him, no, I don't want to do that. So I back up. Then after that, uh, Pat Johnson called me. And he said, uh, I want you to come. And uh, I got the Miyagi for Morita, but he doesn't know karate, so I want you to take uh, him to teach, and uh, I want to stunt double. Mm -hmm. So I did it. And the uh, first movie, Karate Kid. And after that, I just go up, jump up the sky up every day, busy, busy, every place did work. So I made 37 films. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's why I have that. Wow, that, that's, quite a, that's quite a few. You know, I've, uh, yeah. I got, in my library, I have a, a few of your books um, myself, and they were on the Nunchucks uh, books as uh -huh. well. And, um, you know, you, I used to look at videos that you do in Nunchucks, and you 
done. I mean, very, very good with nunchucks. Um, well, thank and you. I think that's, that's one thing that people are not aware of about you is that you are you're very good with weapons as well. Not only with your fist, but you are also good with weapons. Yeah. Okay. No, thank you, though. You know, sometimes we have yeah. um, very yeah. known. That, that's Sorry, that's no. too. And then and then Jack is that Bruce Lee picked him up in my book. Mm -hmm. So he put in a in a movie called Into the Dragon. Oh and, yes. But yeah, we hit a big hit. At the same time, I sold uh, so many books. Right now, I sort of miss what you say about the Inner the Dragon. Yeah, that's what his movie. He made a success, and then they used the Chaku. Oh yes, you talking about when Bruce Lee used the Inner yeah. the Dragon in the nunchuck? Yes. Yes, yeah. but he did, didn't he... know much before. So he right, was, he he was watching my book and he studied. Right. So, but Bruce uh, learned more about uh, nunchucks through looking at your book. Yes. And I think That's we, right. yeah, we, we had uh, discussed previously before, yeah, that um, you were more of a consultant, if anything, uh, more so than, um, you know, in teaching, uh, uh, demonstrating to Bruce by uh -huh. uh, counseling him about the nunchucks. Uh, if I'm mistaken, he would uh, maybe ask you a question or two about the nunchucks. And this is how he learned how to use the nunchucks. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, we we have uh, notable students. Uh, who are your notable students? What students have you trained that stands out? Uh, student? Uh, yes. Any of your students. Yeah. Which of your students? Well, I have uh, a few students uh, mm -hmm. study pretty deep and uh, karate and uh, mm -hmm. I separate, I teach. Mm -hmm. So some in the, my black belt uh, do good for Kobudo, and some are uh, karate. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, are there any particular ones that stands out more so than, than others that has been training yeah, to a, longer? I can teach you both at the same time because it's too hard. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, okay. Is, 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 there, is there a name of a student who a student or two that's been training with you for 40 years yeah. or, or 50 years? Well, uh, I have a guy named uh, Dave Hines. Yes, Dave. Okay. Dave Hines. Dave Hines. And, uh, Hines. Hines, okay. Hines, I got to pick up on Hines. Mm hmm Okay. Then Kevin. Okay. Okay. Tell me something. And, you know, I, I got tons of people who stay with me over 50 years. Wow. That's amazing. That's that's good to, to have someone yeah. to stick with you over such a long period of time. You know, that means that um, you have some good sustenance and you guys have a family-like relationship. And uh, that's yeah. what I, I aspire to, to have with my students. Now, tell me something. Why do you practice? Why are you in the martial arts? Why, why do you? Yeah, why do you practice martial arts? Well, I was a, when I was a kid, I was a sick all the time. So that's mm -hmm. okay. You got to do some exercise. That's why I started kendo. Then mm -hmm. after that, uh, karate, I come to the United States, and uh, some people are not good manners. So I started to teach karate to the manners. Then uh, uh, I start teaching how to clean up the dojo. So everybody after finish class, they have to clean them up, a mop out, and then clean them up, and then clean up toilet, everything. I make mm. do that because this is the I learned that because in the United States, why, why don't you use a janitor? It's not a janitor. It's a you. You made the duty. You have to make clean for next person come up to class. Make comfortable. If you duty, they are uncomfortable. But you have to make other people feel good. That's the reason you clean up the dojo. But they everybody do that. Right, so right. I start teaching more educational. Hmm. Then you, you say, do it. You must do it. Right. Right. 
Now, what do you get out of practicing? What is it that you, what is your benefit of practicing martial arts? Well, I try to develop um, other people to help mm -hmm. bring up more better life. Yes, I, I got you. And, and you know, mean, sure, go ahead. Okay, that means I have to teach. See, for example, if I give money to people, they don't teach anything. Just give money, they spend it. But if I give a job, okay, it's a harder job, you get a little money, they appreciate it more. That's why I start teaching them. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Now, sir, uh, Sensei, how do you measure? How do you measure the effectiveness of a master, grandmaster, Shihan, guru, sifu, etc.? How do you measure the effectiveness? Well, see, I don't call myself a master. I'm not right. a master yet. Yes, understood. Yeah, I just uh, just a sensei. That's it. Yes. I clean uh, up the dojo with the people. I eat together. I just look at regular people do the same thing. Right. That's, that's, I think that's fan, fantastic, very notable of you. Now, yeah. uh, how do you measure how effective you are as an instructor? Well, how, instructor is a, how teach other people, bring them up. For example, uh, uncoordinated guy, you have to teach how to do coordinated. If you can yes. do it, that's a, a master level. And I have a couple guys cannot speak. I don't. But I don't. Slow talk, slow talk. So he started slow talking. And the one guy is that real uh, mad himself if he mistake. I said, don't worry. I did a mistake. So you mistake not big things, just a smile. Mm. So he started doing that. Change it little by little, change it. Then you can see them. I'm glad I teach him. Yes. That's the time I was uh, teaching. I feel good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I spoke to a, a previous um, instructor, and that's what he said. He said that he measured his effectiveness based upon the students that he produced. And based on what I'm hearing, this is what you're saying, is that you've been measured based on your ability to help other individuals which again is uh, very notable of, of, of you. Um, sir, uh, yeah. what, is your, what is your understanding of the difference between Okinawa uh, karate and Japanese karate? What's what the first one? Okay, what, what's the difference? Is there a difference between Okinawa karate and Japanese karate? Okinawa karate? karate? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, no, no, make a difference. No difference, okay. Uh, all same. Only difference is people different way teaching. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Only I don't like the people do it. People, other people, doesn't matter what how good it is. If I say, oh, he's good, or oh, he's no good. Or other people, some people put you down. That's bad part. Mm. Some master that does that. That's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's why people have so many enemies. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't have any, I don't have any enemies. Yeah, that's 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 cause you cool dude. You <laughs> you you but you. If, if you know good, I tell you no good. Right, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, how has karate or martial arts changed over the decades? How has martial arts changed from the time you um, uh, came to the United States? How has karate or martial arts changed? Well, today uh, people use a uh, 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 computer and uh, uh, internet, a telephone. They lose concentration. Mm -hmm. Today the people are totally different. So future have a lot more problems. Mm. Like, and uh, also uh, with karate called kata, uh, we put uh, 60% kata, 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 kata. But some people, they don't come to the training, 
they look at the computer. They get the movement only, they know. Right. Right. So yeah. that, that's the part. The future of that way. Especially going to Olympics, uh, no more, uh, can say no more muscles. Mm. And uh, they call coach. And uh, like a baseball and soccer, if you have a good dojo, they just move. Then if you find another dojo, you have to move again. Students are not anymore one one master. Right. That is the Olympic that is that. Right. I, I, I understand that. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. Sometimes students get upset and they go from one, one studio to the next studio, and it seems like they don't have the fortitude or the diligence to stick in there. And I, I echo what you're saying about the um, – the um, one one of the instructors I spoke to, masters, I said, is that um, many people train by looking at YouTube. So YouTube become their master or their instructor, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, after um, after moving to the United States, <clears throat> have you noticed a difference in the training? Um, you you made you allude to it earlier. But what is the greatest difference that you noticed between the training um, that you had before you came to the United States in comparison well, to the training now? Yeah, I came here. I learned how to teach. Okay. In Japan, I never do that. In Japan, just uh, every day, same exercise, same way the punching, kicking, same kata, one by one, one. But here, you can do that. Today, I do kata first. Next day, I do kumite first. Then next day, kyon first. Mm. Same exercise. I never do the same thing twice a day. I, every day change it. The students don't know what to do. So that doesn't make the interesting. They know exactly how I'm doing this. They're not interesting at all. Yes, I, I, I agree. That's why I learned from this country. Mm. Yes. You know, I looked at your schedule, you know, when you you had emailed me your schedule, and uh, you, you're you quite busy. I mean, you're in a dojo uh, five, I mean, every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have, I mean, every day. I mean, which, you, which is wonderful because sometimes I see people uh, enter a dojo maybe once a week or sometimes twice, but you are there every yeah, Seven days a week. Seven days a week. That's That's wonderful. That's wonderful. How, how how do you um how do you keep the interest? What do you do to keep the interest to stay in the arts so long well, and to still do it every day? I, I make them interesting. So mm. that means I have to study every day. Yes. I was yes. a pastor for five months. I create one uh uh in Japanese soul one in a style and I create it so I started, I'm using that because okay. we call Iaido Iaido is a sit down then you draw the soul you know Iaido? yes yes sir I'm familiar with sword yes yeah well yes. sit down then a lot of American people have knee problems mm. so I figure future is not sit down anymore People can practice sit down. So I made the same kata. I just stand up just doing that. Right. Right. Yeah, it, you know, I, I looked at that because often when I look at different styles in different countries, um, they do things differently. But one thing that we got to take into consideration is one diet and all, as well as the size of um, particular individuals uh, as well. Because I noticed that... Mm. Uh, even last night when I was teaching a class, um, I went down to sit and um, my knees started hurting. It's unusual for my knees, but I'm noticing, of course, I'm getting older. So we have, yeah. to, modif we have to modify sometimes. You know, I noticed that um, you did not train in a, a huge amount of different styles. What I find a lot of times instructors train in 10 different styles or 8 different styles of, of martial arts. Why isn't it that you did not train in so many styles? Why is it that you know, I think, if not mistaken, about three or four different uh, styles and you stuck to those styles versus 
uh, like some other instructors? Well, I'm not sure other instructor, but I study for karate. Mm -hmm. So I, I can teach any place. That's why I study. Somebody above than me, and he's a student, I got a problem. So make sure I can answer every question people ask me, I can do it. That's why I study. If I cannot answer, I already uh, I study more than I give it back to the answer. So right, sometimes right. I learn more. Yes, I, 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 I agree. And also, um, I'm, it's my belief that if you're going to master one of your style, and that's what we hope to do is to be great in what we do, I find it a challenge to master five, six, seven, eight different styles of, of martial arts. Um, uh, I, I believe in trying to master your main system or main style. So if it's karate, uh, it's going to be karate. If it's jiu-jitsu, it's jiu-jitsu. If it's um, a form of kung fu, it's going to be a form of kung fu. Uh, do you agree with that? So, Ask it again. Uh, um, oftentimes, there's some people, sometimes, they call themselves masters in several different styles, like maybe eight different styles or six different styles. I find it difficult for an individual to master many, many, many styles. Not saying that it's, it's impossible, but uh, why is it that you stuck with karate and not jujitsu and some other styles? Well, some people, they want the title. And to me, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Just to me. Right. Right. So that's why I feel. So it doesn't matter what people call me. Call me right. Mr. Demra or Sensei or Shihan. Or I don't like to call master, but I'm not master yet. Yes. So anyway, yes. but that's it. Some yes. people, they want to call. That, that's their business. I, to me, myself, I don't care. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Um, but, but I tell you, whoever called a master and uh, I next, next line up, he does demonstration, I do demonstration. If I'm a better than him, he bears me. I bears him. Mm. But yeah. he's a better than me. I'm okay. So it doesn't matter what you go, I don't have any, any rules. Right, right. Do you understand? I, I, sir, yes, sir. I understand what you what you say. Okay, you you uh, for example, you have a ninth down. Okay. Mm hmm I am a showdown. Mm hmm Then you do demonstration in the public. Right. And I do demonstration too. Then I'm ten times better than you. Which one is better thing? Uh, I, I, I see. You you do on the person, right? If I yes. I if I, I'm uh, you ten times the better than me. I don't lose it because uh, I'm a low ranking, so nobody is different. So doesn't matter what you weigh, I can win. That's why low ranking is better than high ranking. Uh, I understand the concept. I I I understand the concept. And this is. A yeah. parallel that which they use about a, I mean, a kid want to fight an an adult, and it, obviously the adult could beat up the kid if he wanted to, but um, you know the, the adult chose not to because regardless whether he's going to win or not, just the fact that he engaged in such combat make him have lost the fight. That's yeah. right. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, tell me something. <clears throat> you know, we were talking about um, embarrassment, etc., and failure. How do you handle defeat or failure? Say again. How do you handle a loss? If you lose an event or failure or defeat in life, let's say, for instance, maybe it don't have to be in martial arts. It could be you set a goal and you don't achieve your goal, or you well, attempt to. But if I lose, I want to study more. Okay. I don't like to lose, so. 
<laughs> so you don't like blues. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, because you have... if somebody bids on me, I have to do more. Right, right, right. Now, what what about in life? Let's let's get away from martial arts for for just one second. Uh, if you struggle in life or fail in life, uh, how do you handle it? What do you do to to stay focused in life? Well, I go to when I have time. I go to fishing, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I do a lot of rock riding. And uh, I go out with uh, my students that go out to the eat and yes. I talk a lot of things. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's, that's great. You, you create a community. I think that's that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, if you if you had to start over in the martial arts, what would you do differently? Well, I start over the same thing. You think you do the same thing? Great. Yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. You would do the same thing. That's amazing. Now, why is loyalty important to you? What? Why? Why is loyalty important to you? Why? why well, why? Number one, I like people. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of young people, they don't have any direction. Mm-hmm. So I try to give the direction. Some people listen to me and get success. Like, right. uh, for example, uh, Steven Seagal. He was uh, no money and uh, he looking for a job. So I give a job to Japanese village demonstration. Then uh, he, after that he got injury, he left. He went to Japan, then come back. He then made the movie, big movie called Above the Law, big hit. Yes. And uh, I see that I was in a while at uh, Warner Brothers uh, cafeteria, and I come see. Don't forget the beginning. Don't forget the beginning. Yes. So he remember what I say. He always uh, nice to me. So I went to the, his house in Arizona, and uh, yeah, he was uh, really nice to me because I was uh, uh, sick and I, I got hematoma. Mm. So I got the brain damage. But yes. he hold my hand, then they take me out and step down. Yeah, so it's nice to, a lot of people, they don't like Steve, but I like him. Right, right, right. You know, and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we look at television and then we, you know, that image is totally different than who we really are sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, And so we got to be careful how we judge people, you know, and oftentimes when we point the finger at other individuals, we got to remember that the finger, there's uh, what, four more, uh, or three more pointing to with us, you know. So, so, Sensei, let's say 10 years from now, or say uh, 40 years from now, okay, how would you like to be remembered? What would they, what would you like for them to say about you 40 or 50 years from now? I don't know. You don't know? I hope everybody say nice thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say nice thing because I know we've had a conversation. <laughs> well, thank gonna, you. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, you're very patient because we've had conversations and there's been some challenges, technical challenges with some of the technology I've been working with and we've been working with and there's been some challenges. So I can say that you're a very, very patient man. I really, um, I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Most well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sensei, what, um, what is your latest project? Uh, what are you working on right now? Well, right now, I'm working at uh, Breakfast Magazine and the Taekwondo Magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I made a documentary film called Rio Miyagi. Mm-hmm. 
that making the other call for that. Oh. Then I'm making uh, 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 next week. I go to uh, uh, Breakfast Magazine for uh, Kobudo uh, DVD. Yes. Then next month I have a one movie coming up. So that's about it. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I know the times that we've corresponded over the last several months. Um, you know, when you see me in your schedule, I, I see you travel quite a bit. I mean, you're like yeah. on the West only, Coast. Uh, only I can do right now is a doctor mm -hmm. stop at traveling. So okay. I go to all the United States, but uh, I can go to, I can go to Chile, New Zealand, mm -hmm. Spain, Germany, and England. I can't go. Why? Only United States. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why, why is it that you choose not to go to those um, Because of my, my diet is not too good. My oh, your diet. Oh, good. your kidney. Okay. Due to your kidney. Okay. Yeah. I, I understand. Like, right, right now, I, I'm talking to you. I, I'm doing diet right now. Oh, okay. I understand. Da dialysis. Um, yeah. uh, how, how long have you had uh, kidney issues? Uh, I've been a, a kidney problem about, uh, about a year, year now. Oh, you know. Okay. Let's let's yeah. hope that um, that improves. Five years ago, I got a hematoma. Yes. Then a brain surgery. Then uh, well, I, I've been in the movie that time. Anyway, then after that, kidney problem. And uh, yes. I have my foot to get a numbness. And a lot of stuff come up. Mm. So, real tough life. But so I'm alive. So I just enjoy myself. Right. You know, uh, we, we conversated before and we discussed um, striking objects. And uh, if you're not mistaken, you mentioned that that's one thing that you would you would change is that you wouldn't strike objects uh, as you did be, before. Is, is that correct? Pardon me? I can't uh, hear. I, I, I think uh, previously, maybe five months ago, we, we well, three, four months, whenever we spoke, we talked about hitting the objects. And you mentioned that one thing that you would not do now is you would not strike objects. Um, I think uh, like breaking boards or rocks or whatever it is. Sometimes people have a tendency to damage their hands by hitting hitting or breaking hard objects. What, what are your thoughts about breaking objects with your hand? Yeah, I'm not sure because I, I'm, I'm 76, mm -hmm. but I'm still everything okay. Right, okay. I break in board so many times. Yes. Okay. I break so, in joints, but I never have arthritis. Hmm. So I think it depends on people. Right. 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 Uh, uh, when you were training in um, previous three, four coming to the United States, when you when you fall, did you use equipment or just your bare hand and your bare feet? And I don't get it. Okay. Uh, when, when you used to fight or uh, spar in training, did you did you use um, safety equipment or not? When did you – do you ever use safety equipment? Well, uh, fighting and the competition, two different stories. Mm hmm Yeah. And I said sometimes demonstration, uh, doesn't matter how strong you are, but if you don't have any experience, you be this way, and then go bam, 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 and build them up. People mm -hmm. like it. Right, so right. even today, I can move my body, but I still I can talk. I can do some idea. I can give them. For example, mm -hmm. guy give me head rock. You know head rock, right? Okay. He gave you what again? Head head rock. Did you say head rock? Head rock. Yeah. And yeah. I grab my head. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, I got you. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I do? What's that, sir? I bite his ribs. <laughs> but everybody's screaming. <laughs> yeah, that's part of karate. So. That, that, that's part of karate. It's, it's uh, yeah. self-defense. Self 
<laughs> that kind of I start demonstration right like now. Right. <laughs> it, it, if it's effective and it works, it, 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 I, yeah. I agree with you. It, it, it I works. Said it, I said, grab my neck. Holler, holler. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, he let you go. I, I bet you. <laughs> Um, yep. Sir, if, if if someone wants to get in touch with you, what is the best method in uh, doing so? Should they email you, uh, call you, or just take a look at your website? Yeah, well, you can you can email me. I do every day. I watch it. Oh, okay, okay. And what, what I, I have to give give the message to people. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, do your best. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter how small business, always have a good job. But this way, next come up, as I mean, uh, don't follow the money. Money follow you. Yes, money follow you. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that's one of the keys to happiness. I mean, I, that's, I'm that's gonna, my opinion. Yeah. yeah so I'm going to share something with you also, sir. Um, I recall when I was, um, I'm an educator. And I was uh, lived up north, and I was making decent money as an educator. And I moved uh, in the southern part of the uh, United States here on the East Coast, and I'm making uh, a lot less money. But I'm going to tell you, um, mentally and physically, I feel better because, like you said, um, I was chasing the money. Now I'm not chasing the money. I'm focusing on me as it relates to me understanding who I am within my own skin. And I think that is, um, I think that is important. Um, you know, uh, I, I meant to ask the question as it relates to um, racism. Uh, when you came to the United States, or since you've been to the United States, have you observed racism? Oh yes. <laughs> okay. Was it? Uh, was it? Would you give us a? a Example or situation whereby you experienced racism? Well, uh, 1970, my mother came out from uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was living in a garage at that time. So I want to rent an apartment. But uh, on the uh, vacancy, I went over there, but they don't give me room. No, we fall. So I went another apartment, vacancy, but no, doesn't matter where you go. They said no, 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 no. Mm. So I have a real hard time to get an apartment. Yeah. It is, it, it, um, was it clear the reason why uh, you didn't get it is because of your nationality? Hmm? Was it was it clear that you did not get the apartment because of who you who you are? As it relates to your race. Well, because, because uh, I'm Japanese, that's it. Yeah, right, right. Then, right. then uh, one apartment I went over there and I said, uh, yeah, we have a figure. What's the nationality? I said, oh, we go again. Then mm. he said, uh, I'm, I'm Japanese. I don't want to say Korean or Chinese because sooner or later they find out anyway. So I said, I'm Japanese. And then I said, goodbye. He said, no, 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 no. Stay here. We rent you. Because I don't know who was it. Some gardener was uh, living before I moved apart this apartment. He was cleaning them up at his office, and uh, he owed the payment every day, every month, stay on time. They never have a party. They never have any problem. So he left. So I like the Japanese. Come on. So that's why I got it. So I did the same way. No bad things. I never have a party. I always pay on time, and then that's it. Fantastic, fantastic, uh, sir. Um, so we've come to the end of the interview. Uh, are there any uh, last words um, of thoughts? You just shared some thoughts with us just a second ago, but are there additional thoughts you would like to leave with our audience? Me? Uh, are there any last words you would like to leave with our listeners? 
Well, I think I told you, uh, doesn't matter what, even small business, you have to do the best. Yes, you did tell and, us that. Uh, all you start to take in, don't, don't think about the money, money for you. I agree. You always connect with it. I, I understand. And, uh, this country, only one country working hard, you can get it. Yes. I, I, we, I thank you for that. That's, that, that's so. called America. Yes, I understand. Thank you very much. Thank, America thank, is a great country. I, I, I agree. I would. Um, I, so I, only, I, only people, young people, don't teach enough. That's the problem. You, know? hmm. you got to teach them. All young people have to teach. That's why I teach young people. I, I, I think that's really important too. I think that's one of the reasons why I've been an educator for the last, say, about 21 yeah. years is because yeah, yeah, young we got, people that are, yeah. yeah, we got to pass the message down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, young people teach young people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, sensei, I want to thank you uh, for sharing oh. your stories and knowledge. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I want to really thank you. And uh, you just heard it, Sensei Pomora Demara on MartialArtsNow.com. I am Pedro Bennett, the founder of MartialArtsNow.com. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned, and we'll be back. <laughs>